five verses, and uh, but it speaks. Uh, it's got a lot to say to us, and we're just going to touch the surface uh, this morning. So if you have your Bibles and you're already there, I'm going to uh, go ahead and read uh, all five verses uh, first, and then we will go back to the beginning, okay? So Psalms 93, begin with verse 1, says, The Lord reigns, He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed, He has girded Himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. Your throne is established from of old, and you are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. Psalm 93 uh, uh, is, does not have a title, uh, as some of the psalms do. But these next um, uh, about seven psalms are going to be focusing primarily on, uh, on Lord. The, the, our first uh, psalm here is focusing on the Lord as, the, as eternally, or uh, He's the eternal reign. Uh, he's over all things, in other words. Uh, so there are some things that maybe, as far as the world is concerned, um, that, are, that is different than what you and I as Christians uh, believe. But it needs to be uh, known and we need to uh, be reminded of that God is in control. No matter what we see in this world, no matter what uh, life brings uh, to us individually or to our church or to our, our counties or to our world as a whole, uh, we need to be reminded uh, even uh, amongst all the chaos, that God is in control, that He knows exactly what's going on. Uh, he's not caught off guard. There's nothing that you and I or anybody could do, rather, uh, that can catch God off guard. He knows our hearts, right? I mean, we see examples of that. Even when Jesus picked His disciples, He knew that Judas Iscariot was going to betray Him. He knew what he was doing, well, and, and, and Judas didn't know that God knew or that Jesus knew that what he was doing. He knew Peter was going to deny him three times. That's why he told him that. You're going to deny me three times before this night's over. No, I will never deny you, Lord. And see, we all have that desire to serve God to do what God wants us to do. And we think that if we're put into certain situations that we'll be able to do it. But the truth is, we are weak vessels. The truth is, we allow circumstances in our life to change our minds sometimes. Sometimes we get scared and we, get, and we have fear and we don't always do what God wants us to do. But I think the psalmist, and we do not know uh, who wrote this psalm. We don't know the author of the psalm. Uh, but we do know who the psalmist is writing about because he tells us in the very first verse, he's writing about the Lord, Yahweh. Uh, he is the covenant God, the God of promises, the God who, who promised to be with His people and the God who promised to establish um, that uh, throne of David forever and ever and that His Son, Jesus, His only begotten Son, would be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Ultimately, He will reign over all the earth and over all the, of heaven, and we will dwell in Him forever if you are a child of His. That's the ultimate goal. So this psalm says it's talking about the omnipotent Lord. We see his all He's all-powerful. We see He's majestic, and that He's clothed, it says, in strength. This psalm could have been... Uh, maybe written at a time that Israel was going through some, um, some struggles with their enemies. We don't know. Um, but the psalm could have been written to encourage the Israelites during these times. It could be written to encourage us because uh, God's Word is for us today, right? Old Testament and New. Uh, it's all part of God's Word and it, we can learn from it. I think God wants us to know 
that He has not left us, that He is on His throne, and He's not just sitting there uh, hoping that everything is going to work out. He has a plan, and His plan is going to be carried through to the end, to the T, at His time. Everything that happens is going to happen at the time. It's at the right time. Everything that happens is going to happen at the right time that God would like to see it happen. We need to be reminded that the Lord is mighty. He's all-powerful, and he's, see, he's seated on His eternal throne, and He is ruling over all the earth, even today. There's never been a time when the Lord did not exist. He has been all the time. He's God all the time. So verse 1 says the Lord reigns. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 31 says, Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, and let them say among the nations that the Lord reigns. What does this mean, the Lord reigns? I think it refers to his, uh, not only to his coming kingdom, um, but it also refers to everything uh, right now, that God, everything that's happening, God uh, is, uh, that he wants happen, is, and in that, that he is intended to happen, is going to happen or has already happened, right? He's, he's eternally reigning. He's, he's, whether we acknowledge that or not, whether other countries acknowledge that he even exists, whether the atheists uh, believe that he exists, See, it's a, it's, this is something amazing. God does not need us to believe that He exists. He doesn't need me to believe that, whether He exists or not, because He exists, whether I believe it or not. So these that, that go around, live in our world today, that, it, that do not believe that, that, that God exists, and that he is, he is eternally reigning, and that everything is happening, he's aware of, and he is going to work everything out in the end for his good, to be honored and glorified and lifted up, and he is going to bring us home when it's, when it's time. It's going to happen whether we believe it or not. There's coming a day when, where all will be subject to the Lord, no matter who they are. All will be subject to the Lord, and peace will be forevermore. The Lord reigns is a reminder that God is on the throne and nothing goes unseen by Him. The Lord Jesus Christ showed this when He was on this earth, that the Lord reigns by the miracles that He performed while He walked on this earth. He showed us that there was nothing that was not subject to His command. Even when he was walking on this earth, everything was subject to his command. He commanded the storms to cease, and what happened? They ceased uh, to be. They was, they was still. He commanded the blind man to see, to open up his eyes to see, and he could see. He forgave sin while he was on this earth, and then he told the lame man to get up to take up his bed and walk. And what did he do? He got up and he walked. Why? Because he reigns. He is Lord over all things. Even when he was in his earthly body, there was nothing that he did not have control over. At all times, he was in control. Even with his own self, he gave himself up to die for you and I. We need to be reminded, as the Psalms has reminded us, Today, that he reigns. It says he's clothed with majesty. Another way to put that is he's robed with majesty. He is majesty. He's, all, he's almighty. He's great. He's all powerful. And he loves us with everything that he has and that's why he came in the form of Jesus as a as an earthly body to live a life that you and I couldn't live. Psalm 104 verse 1 says bless the Lord O my soul 
O Lord my God, you are very great and you are clothed with honor and majesty. Jude, it's only one chapter, uh, verses uh, 24 through 25 says this, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who is alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen see he has always been these things he has always had control over all things all creation no matter where the world was heading he was still in control and he's in control today the lord is has girded himself it says at the end of that verse with uh with strength he has girded himself with strength surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved when i think of that uh, when, when it says that he's girded with strength, the first thing I thought of is, is running that race uh, that Paul talks about. Laying aside those things, those weights, uh, those things that, that weigh you down. You know, when I, when, if I played sports, and, and I used to love to play sports a whole lot, I, I made sure my pockets were empty. I didn't have anything in my pockets to weigh me down. Uh, because I wanted to be able to move. I wanted to be able to move quickly uh, as I could. Uh, I won't as quick as others, but to me, I was, uh, I was decent. <laughs> uh, but I, can th I think of that when the Lord is girding himself, that he's getting down, he's, he's planting his feet, and he's getting firmly planted so, so he cannot be moved, and he's getting ready to do something. And it says that he, has, he is robed with majesty, he reigns, and he's taken this strength, and he has established the world. He set the boundaries. He, he created everything as if uh, the way that he wanted it to be. He's placed the stars where they need to be and the moon and where they need to be and the suns where they need to be. He's placed our earth right where it needs to be. It's, it's the right distance from the sun. Everything grows the way it should if we allow it to and, and stop trying to uh, help it sometimes. Allow the Lord to do its work and it'll work. It's when we try to get involved, it messes up. But, but he has blessed us from the beginning of the time, from time started to now, and he is going to carry us on through. We got to believe that, um, or, some, or, or we're not going to make it if you don't. He has strength, and he has established the world, and it says it will not be moved. In other words, it will not be shaken. There's nothing outside of God himself that can, that can move this earth or change it. He's the only one that can do those things. Verse 2 says that your throne is established. So not only has he established this world, everything that's in it, he's made, he created, every, he's sustaining everything as a way it is, but it says your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. I think this is a great reminder that God reigns over the heavenly realm and the earthly realm. He, re he reigns over all things. He's not just out there somewhere. You know, he's not just out there just waiting to see what happens. His throne has always been. It's an everlasting throne, and it will always be an everlasting throne. Uh, we did not know that, but it has been. His throne has always been. The Lord is everlasting. He never changes. He's been uh, the same all this time, uh, and He's still the same today. He's the same God who's, who's commanded us to be obedient to Him and to be holy as He is holy, if we want to be a child of His. Psalm 45, verse 6, says that the, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. How long is that? It's forever. And I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how, for, how long forever is or eternity is, but it's a long time, right? It's a long time. Sometimes uh, just waiting in line to get your food 
Uh, it's a long time for us when that line ain't moving. We can't, we can't hardly uh, stand it, you know. We want, what's going on up there? Why ain't this line going anywhere? I got to go. Well, eternity is going to be a, a long time, so we got a long time to, uh, to, to worship and to praise and to glorify God, and we need to learn how to do that here. It says, a skeptor of righteousness is the skeptor of your kingdom. Everything about God is, 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 is pure and holy. He says he's righteous, he's, he's holy, he's, he's sinless. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't think, uh, he doesn't want to get revenge out of anger, uh, unrighteous anger like we do. We, we, you know, when somebody uh, upsets us, we, we, our first response is to get them back, right? That's not God's response. He doesn't respond like you and I but he's holy and he's righteous and everything that he's established is for his good and his glory and he wants us to be a part of that. He's inviting us to be a part of that kingdom. Verse 3 says, The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. What is the psalms is trying to say here? He's, he repeats uh, one. He repeats three times uh, talking about the floods or the waters, uh, how they rise. I think when he's talking about it lifted up his voice, he's talking about um, how the, the, the sound, how loud it is, how the waves are rising up. Uh, when, I, when I first think about the, the way he's describing, it's like the ocean to me. Uh, it's like that type, that that big body of water. You just don't know how uh, small you are until you're in the middle of the ocean and you look all the way around the boat and there's no land. And I'm like, I sure hope the captain knows which way land is, because <laughs> when you're out there, I don't have no boundaries. I, I I have nothing to look at. You know, there's no McDonald's that I can go by and say, oh, I know where I'm at. It's all water, and it's everywhere. And when the waves are out there, when the waves are high, and it's hitting the boat, and you're getting spun around, and, 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 the, and you, they done turned the boat around so many times, uh, I'm lost. I'm all in his hands, right? I'm all in his, in his hands. The, 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 the strength and the, the power of the ocean, when you are standing there on its shore and you can hear those waves crashing, it's loud. It's some, it can be so loud sometimes you can't even hear yourself talk to the person right beside you if you're standing right there. And you know, not only that, but you, you don't even have to be close to it when the, when the waves and the, and the seas are, are just, the waves are pounding like that. You can be a mile away. I heard somebody um, give a, uh, talk about this lesson, and they, they said that their house was almost a mile away from the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. And when it is crashing, that he can hear the ocean, those, those Mediterranean sea waves crashing the seashore from his house. And he said, and he's, and he's a mile away. It's loud. It's voiceful. And it can be scary, right? It can be scary. It can, be, it can make you fear. It can make you um, uh, wonder. Uh, and, and, and I believe this is what the Psalms is just trying to uh, tell us uh, this morning in these verses. He's trying to say, listen, when in this world that you're living right now, in the moment that you're living in right now, sometimes it can get so loud. Sometimes the pressure can be so much and you can go through so much trials in your life. But he wants you to don't forget that the Lord reigns. Even over those things. He's concerned about each and every one of us. And he reigns. And he is on his throne. And he has established all these things. And it will not be shaken. It will not be moved. He's, he's forever and ever. And he will not give up on us. Even through these trials that you and I have to go in. Sometimes they can be scary. 
and they can be so overwhelming. And you may lose your boundary. You may forget where you are. But don't forget that you serve a God who loves you and wants to help you and wants to lift you up and put you back on your feet because he's a God who loves. He reigns. Trials will come our way. And it's evident uh, even you know, in these few verses right now, trials are going to come. He's never promised us that they wouldn't come. He's never promised us that we won't have hard times to go through. But he has promised us that he will get us through those times and he will get us to where we need to be. And when it's time, when it's his time, when it's the right time, he's either going to take you home or he's going to come and get us all at the same time. We'll be, we'll, we'll be here today and gone tomorrow, right? In a blink of an eye, just like that. When it's his time, because Jesus says he's standing at the door and all he's doing is waiting on the Father to say, now it's time, now it's time. But listen, every day we get up, every day that we wake up that next morning, he's given somebody an opportunity or a chance to become a child of his. His desire is all to know him. His desire is none perish. And we need to be about doing God's work uh, here in our life, in our, in our workplaces, in our church, and across this world. We need to be joining others who want to see people come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we have many opportunities uh, to do that. We need to live our life so that others can be drawn to them. When the, when the floodwaters start to rise, let us be reminded that God is on his throne and, he, and everything, everything is subjected to him. And he can calm that storm when it's his time. He can do it. We need to trust and believe that he can. Trials can be overwhelming, but God is always in control. You know, if our foundation is built upon the rock, you know, Jesus talked about that in the Sermon on the Mount. At the very end, he talked about the two foundations. And if you are built on the rock, which is him, you shall be established, you shall be firm, and you will not be moved. That's a promise. He's going to help you. You can, you can withstand anything in this life you'll be able to face any storm that comes your way we will not be able to avoid the storms but we will be able to go through the storms with jesus on our side and with him as our foundation we will be able to withstand matthew chapter 8 verses 23 through 26 now when he got into a boat his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and abuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. You know, if you notice this verse, what, it, what did it say? It said that the disciples followed him. The disciples followed him. And they were led right into a storm. But they was with the Savior, right? They were with the Savior. You know, sometimes we are followers of Christ. Right? We call ourselves that. We're little Christ. We're Christ-like. We're Christians, right? That's what they, we say that means. We're followers of Christ. And sometimes, even if we're following Christ, there are going to be storms and trials that are going to come our way. But let us not be fearful of those storms. Let us not be of little faith. 
But let us be reminded as Jesus reminded them that you are with me. And as long as we are with Christ, our Savior, our Lord, the King of kings, as long as we're with Him and He has surrounded us, we have nothing to fear because He can calm that storm just like that. He's going to get us through to the other side. It was a test, I think, uh, in this case. He was testing their faith. He was testing um, their uh, faith in Him. And also, He was allowing them to see how weak they were. Look, I'm weak. And I ain't going to, I'll be the first one to admit, I'm not all powerful, you know, when, I, when it comes to facing storms. I fear and I get scared too. And, and, and I want things to happen when, uh, when they're not happening as fast as I want them to happen. But I need to also be reminded, as this psalm reminded me this week, that God is in control and that he is over everything. That is the very next verse. That's what he's, the psalm just tries to tell us, that God is mightier than our problems. He's mightier than what the world is going through now. He can take care of all these things and still uh, be concerned about us as individuals. The Lord, verse 4 says, is on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than, uh, than the mighty waves of the sea. The Psalms says we don't have to fear those flood waters. We don't have to fear those loud sounds, those um, thunderstorms that we have to go through in our life or the trials that we have to go through in this life. We don't have to fear those things because He's mightier than they. He's over them. He's stronger than them. He can command them and they will listen to Him. We serve our Savior who's rules over all. He, that's, an, that's another thing I think what reigning means. He's, all, he's, the, he's the ruler over all things. And when He speaks, they must listen. Everything must listen to Him when He speaks or commands. Those, those noises are, are just are nothing to us as long as our foundation is built on Him because He's mightier than those. And then lastly, verse 5, it says, Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. What are some things that testifies of the Lord today? What are some things that you can think about in your life that testifies of the Lord uh, today? And we've been reminded about some of these things in other Psalms. Everything that is created we know is a testament of God today. These things remind us that the Lord is faithful. He's, he promised Abraham uh, to, to take him, him and that his seed would occupy the promised land. And it did, right? He got him through that. He got uh, Noah and his family through the flood. Uh, he got King David, uh, became the, 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 the appointed king by him, who led his people to many victories and established that kingdom, established that throne, so that one day Jesus Christ will come back and he is going to sit on that very throne for a thousand years before taking us back to heaven with him. The Lord reminds us that the Lord, uh, uh, this reminds us that the Lord cares for us, that he loves us. He promised David all these things and it happened just as he promised David. And that, of, of course, that Jesus would come and uh, be seated on that throne. The Lord is holy. We're reminded of that. He's holy. He's righteous. He's majestic. God's holy word is also a testament to us today. That, uh, that's what we have ultimately today. We can rely on this word. It's the living word it's, it's called. It's, 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 it can move things. It can change things. Just by, by someone reading a scripture or seeing a scripture, 
the Holy Spirit can get into that person's heart and change them in an instant. And they can be different than what they were prior to that. That's, that's the power of God's Word. And that's what the, the Scripture tells us, that it's all-powerful, right? Jesus says in John 14, verse 6, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus, all authority was given to him. And he showed us who God was. He showed us that God has, has authority over all things. Over all things in nature and over all dominions and powers, uh, countries, nations. He is in control of all those as well. There's nothing that's out of his uh, realm that he is not in control of. The Lord has always been holy. He has always, he has called us all to be ambassadors of him. So let us be faithful and allow his light to shine through us so that others may see that light and be drawn to that light. And let us be faithful in doing that which God has called us to do, and that's to be witnesses for him. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this psalm. God, we thank you uh, for your love. We thank you, God, for reminding us that you are in control, that you've always been in control, and, Lord, that you exist and that you want us to live with you one day. But, God, you have called us to do works, mighty works, that you have given each and every one of your children the ability to do. You have given us the, the ability to be that, that salt and light, to be that witness to a lost family member, to our workplaces, uh, to wherever we go um, in our free time, on our, you know, getting groceries or wherever we go in our life. You have called us to always be reminded or be mindful of the, our surroundings and be faithful and be in that obedient uh, um, servant of yours and let others see Christ in us and let us be faithful in doing those things and we'll give you the praise and the glory for all that you do in your holy name. Amen.